Example 61. Assume that having a boy or a girl is equally likely when having a child, and derive the probability distribution for the random variable x, which will equal the number of girls when having two children. Okay, so to derive a probability distribution, we have to first define what that is. A probability distribution is essentially a table, or it could be a graph, or it could be a formula, that lists all the possible outcomes for a certain experiment and all the associated probability. So what we're going to do here is maybe create a table, and the table is going to list the number of outcomes that are possible for x. So let's look at those. If we create a column called x, let's think about it. If you have two children, and x represents the number of girls that you can have, what are the possibilities? Well, I would say that there's a chance that you have no girls out of two kids, or you could have just one girl out of two kids, or you could have two girls out of two kids, right? Both children girls. That's all you can have because you're only having two children, so you couldn't have three girls or something like that, right? All right, then from there we have a probability for each of these events. So we're going to list the probabilities next to the events, and those will be all the associated probabilities for the problem. Okay, and then from there, once we're done, we'll talk about some properties the table should have. So let's talk about how to get the probability that there are no girls out of two births. Well, it's helpful they told us that the probability of boys and girls will be assumed to be equally likely here. Because then we're looking for the probability that we end up having x equals to zero. Where x equals zero means essentially what? The probability of having two boys, right? Or you could say no girls, but that's the same thing. As we assume there's only boy-girl possible here in this scenario, and uh, if there are no girls, there must be two boys then. What's the chance that you get a boy? Well, first of all, two boys is two separate events, right? So we'd have two spaces that we have to fill in with probabilities. And we'd say, well, what's the chance the first child is a boy? Well, it's a one-half chance the first child is a boy. What's the chance the second child is a boy? Well, that'd be a one-half chance as well because we'll assume the births are independent. And then when we multiply that out, of course, we see the answer is one over four. 1 times 1, 2 times 2. So it's a 1 fourth chance that we have 0 girls, or in other words, 2 boys. Okay, so that one's easy enough. If we actually look at um, the 2 case here, it's similar, right? Because of course the probability that x would be equal to 2 just means the probability of 2 girls, right? And since boys and girls are equally likely, it would be the same exact calculation, right? Because what's the chance the first child is a girl? Well, one half chance it's a girl. What's the chance the second child is a girl? Well, that's also one half, right? And then of course the total there, when you multiply it out, will be one fourth. So one fourth probability that it is two girls, right? Now I've left the one in the middle out because it's the last one and it's probably the more difficult one if I left it out, right? Okay, well, I wanna talk about two ways to get it. We could do the straightforward calculation or we can use this idea from probability distributions, which says that if we have all the possible outcomes, then we must have all the probability, which means this probability column must always add up to one because one is the decimal form of 100%. So if I were to take one fourth and one fourth and add them together, I get a half, right? And that means this leftover case must be a half so that we have a quarter plus a half plus another quarter equaling one. So I know this answer must be a half and I don't have to calculate it now. I have my answer and the most difficult one to calculate is done for me. Now you may say, well, okay, well that's nice and that's an interesting trick, but what about um, if I actually was forced to calculate it because I couldn't rely on that trick? Well, then it would be the probability that you have x equals one, which is the same as saying the probability of one girl. Now the reason why this one is difficult, or more difficult I should say, is because this can happen two ways. This is the same as saying the probability of getting a girl on the first birth and a boy on the second, or a boy on the first and a girl on the second. So it's important that you look at both cases separately because they're two different situations. In one scenario, the girl is the oldest. In the other scenario, the girl is the youngest of the two children. So they are different events, different experiences. So we have to count for them separately. And the word or means just that, you know, you can get one girl by having this scenario happen or this scenario happen. But also the word or means to add in probability. So we're going to say the probability of girl boy plus the probability of boy girl. 
And, you know, actually, since girls and boys are equally likely here, both of these work out to be two fractions multiplied. So it'll be two fractions multiplied plus two fractions multiplied. And since they're equally likely, the chance we have a girl on the first birth is one half. The chance we have a boy is one half. And then likewise, the chance we have a boy is one half, and the chance we have a girl is one half. So we end up with a fourth plus a fourth, which of course, you know, is just simply one half. A quarter plus a quarter equals one half. And that's how we end up with the one half answer for the case of one girl. But that was, you know, ultimately, um, a more difficult way to do it than the way we did it initially, which is just to say, hey, there's only one missing space, so whatever is in that space must add, make sure that these two things and that add up to one. And that's the um, use of the idea that the probability distribution must have all the probability, so in other words, this column must always add up to one. The last thing I want to say about the table is you also want to double check to make sure all your probabilities are reasonable. That means they should be between zero and one inclusive. In other words, you can't have any negative probabilities, and you shouldn't have any probabilities that are greater than one. Arch checks out on that, so we're done.